Hi, everyone. So welcome to this episode of uh, Sovarel. Um, and this is a really interesting episode because this is the first time we've actually had a guest. So uh, Dr. Kalopian is our guest and he's an expert in AI. He's a professor dealing with artificial intelligence at the American University of Armenia. So this is a, a special event. So I, I definitely want to welcome you. Uh, we're in separate uh, locations, uh, but uh, we're still uh, being able to come together through the marvel of technology. So welcome, Dr. Kerlopia. Thank you so much, Brian. It's a pleasure to be on this forum. Okay, so let's get right to it. I just have a, a general question that I want to pose to you so that we can have a, a discussion, uh, you know, sort of a, a short little interview type thing. But I just want to get your, your thoughts here dealing with, with this question. So what should professors, instructors, and all teachers really know about AI and what can they do to better prepare for this? Yeah, so one framing that I found helpful is that AI can be thought of as a virtual teammate. Mm. And so when thinking of teams, one leadership principle is to kinder strengths and weaknesses of each team member right. and how to have interactions between team members for maximal team performance. So when we consider AI, we have a technology area that is quite powerful in helping us make decisions, and that's powered by finding patterns in data and by extension alerting us at the right time. So in terms of the classroom context, that's a team member that can help the professor spot things. Is a student doing better or worse, is struggling on a topic or not. Content can be adapted to meet those specific gaps or accentuate strengths. And then there's the whole area in terms of AI, considering almost as a teammate from the student side of helping to write essays, articles, to do research prep and finding information. So this team perspective, I've quite found quite helpful in the educational sector and beyond. Yeah, yeah. It kind of reminds me of the AI implementation with augmented reality, where, you know, I'm analyzing something, let's say I'm a doctor, and I'm looking at someone's, let's say, rash on their foot. And if I'm wearing augmented reality uh, glasses, then it can show me, oh, this rash, it's probably this, based off of a million photos of other rashes, the AI system will recommend something to me. And then myself as the doctor would look at it and decide, oh, okay, well, that makes sense. Or let me consider that. So yeah, I, I like that idea of a, of a teammate, right? That, that makes a lot of sense to me. So can you explain a little bit more? Um, so for those viewing this video, Dr. Kolopian and I were on a different video where I asked them questions about AI specifically in higher education. And one of the questions posed dealt with AI and cheating, as well as instructing with AI and understanding the process in that students will be at a disadvantage if by the time they complete their higher education, they don't know about AI. If they're not actively using AI, they won't be able to be competitive in in the market, right? In the industry, because AI is becoming used so much out there in work that it behooves us as instructors to help students know how to use AI. So can you tell us a little bit more about your thoughts on how an instructor can do that, how we could use AI in our teaching and in students' learning? Yeah, this could be drawn as an example to things like when Excel emerged from Microsoft and you know, Google Sheets emerged subsequently. You know, in the educational context, we have to be cognizant of what's out in the workforce or outside the university walls or the schoolyard. Right. And so AI in different facets, um, as per AI literacy, will be as ubiquitous as computer liter literacy. You know, now there's very little hesitation to use computers, you know, in the educational um, context. So I think this, this aspect of what parts of AI technology um, can be pertinent going from the classroom and beyond. 
and then as a recommendation to have some exercises that do represent that world outside the educational context. So it could be a few of full AI support capability, uh, but perhaps toward the end of a course or the end of the year um, so that the, the students have that exposure. Mm, so you're saying skills mastery first and then implementation of using an AI to do even more with your skills because now you've developed that. So now you can, again, do more. So uh, in that other video that we did, and I'm gonna link to that in the description as well as I'll make it linkable. Um, in, the, in that example, we talked about writing something yourself and then also being able to have an AI assist you with, it, with writing. So that way you could make the, the creation so much faster and be able to do even more. So even more opportunities to create and then to edit and to understand the fundamentals of it so that you can make the best final product possible. Yeah, the idea is that foundational knowledge acquisition is not stunted by premature use of technology, but the idea is that that technology does represent working in tandem with a person, uh, maximal output. So, you know, that exposure and education is helpful. So I'm curious, Brent, you know, what specific technologies, software packages have you been seeing that have been popping up across the different classrooms? Right. Well, to begin with, one of the things that I always recommend to my, my students, and this is whether I'm teaching a writing course or even a course that has some assignments that use writings, like some essays, is I tell them from the very beginning, hey, all of you should be using Grammarly. You know, that, that's a, an AI system in itself that helps you with a, at least correction of grammar errors. So that is very powerful. But I spend time there to tell them, hey, don't just use it as a way for it to fix things for you. You need to use it as a way to, hey, it's going to highlight a, a problem, an issue that you made. So before you accept it, you should look at it and go, oh, this is wrong. Next time I won't do that. That way it'll make you a better writer by seeing the errors as opposed to just accepting it, right? So that way you don't just continually make the errors. So Grammarly is a big one. Uh, the other one I'm starting to see though is students that will take an essay that's written by someone else and then they'll use an AI system that can paraphrase it for them. And it's paraphrase it in a way that it's very hard to detect that it was paraphrased. Myself as the instructor will know if you know, the student all of a sudden makes something really great and before they weren't, so I can see the difference in their writing, but still that becomes very difficult, especially if you have a class that has a lot of students in it. So this idea of understanding the process and having them turn in maybe an outline first before the final product, or I'm also thinking about incorporating different things. Like it's not just about that final product, but okay, I'm also gonna do an audio interview with you. So I'm going to ask you, pose you questions directly to, to gain or to see your knowledge level on what you created. So if you just, you know, instantly created something else over here that wasn't yours, you're not going to properly be able to know the information once I, I don't want to say grill you, but once I ask you questions to see your knowledge level. So changing the way that I do assessments because of AI is something that I think all instructors need to be thinking about for sure. Yeah, that, that assessment piece is really important. You know, what are the steps or the process or methodology used? You know, this signals a shift in terms of the focus of education, more teaching of methodology as opposed to absolute knowledge. You know, you know we can debate, you know, which is better in an absolute sense, but definitely technology is forcing the former. Yeah. And in terms of this very powerful use case you mentioned, indeed, within AI, there is machine learning. And within that, there is NLP, so natural language processing. And two powerful use cases are text summarization, take literally a book and distill it down to a one-page book report. Or the other way, you input five bullet points and it generates a 10-page paper both of which are powerful, both of which are difficult to detect. Yeah. And I would say the best uh, solution here is actually the social contract between the, the instructor and the students that 
for this assignment, we will be doing it in this way. And then I actively titrate up and say, okay, for the last assignment, you do it in a hybrid sense. Mm. Or one chapter is written with well-crafted prompted bullets that the student also shows in terms of the methodological proof. And then the other chapters are manually written. So you have this new type of exercise where the human has to wrap something that's bulk created. And again, that's a new type of skill and ties back to this idea of the AI as the virtual team member. Increasingly in industry, not only search is being used by AI, but generation of content. And then humans have to interact with that, represent that, and then put that in a soft skills or an emotional intelligence context to get other humans to work to do new initiatives. So uh, we're definitely seeing shifts in terms of that content development in aggregate and content handoffs. Wow. Uh, okay. So um, I, I want to wrap up our, because I don't want to make this video too long and I'm hoping to be able to interview you again in the future. Uh, so I want to close out by asking you a question that goes back to our first question in that what can instructors, teachers, anyone that trains people or educates people, what can they do to be better educated about this stuff? What, what, can, they, what can they do besides watching our video and that other video that I said will be linked up to? What are some other places or some other things they can do to really become better subject matter experts and be able to, to use different tools in the best way possible? Yeah, as instructors, uh, would engage with pedagogy, so the, the art of conveying information, knowledge, methodology. So actively read the scholarly journals in the field. Hmm. Uh, partner with students in terms of the awareness of what they are seeing and to become directly comfortable with these technologies. To actually use so, them. Oh, abso absolutely. I mean, this... Uh, you know, for the instructor to teach computer literacy to the students implicitly, they need to be computer literate. Mm. Now we're seeing the same thing with AI literacy. And a key aspect of that is exposure. Mm. So exactly as some of the tools you've been mentioning, uh, things that have grammatic support, but to do so in a deliberate way, understanding the types of input to shape future thinking and writing capability to actually go through this. I mean, it's quite startling. Uh, I would say this experience of writing five bullets that you write and an essay coming out and the other way, the first time you do that, it's almost like the first time you sat in a driverless car. And in the same way there were horses than regular cars and then the world was never the same. So would definitely recommend. and. Perhaps you want to do that with your students as a collective learning experience. And the discipline, though, will come from this pedagogical point of view that early in a course, some parts should be all manual to ensure the foundational knowledge and capability is there. Right, right. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. And, you know, I think that in the future, in the near future, we're not gonna be talking about AI in the same way. You know, when we talk about a computer, it's going to be like assumed, oh yeah, it's got AI. Like that, that's a normal thing. It's not, it's not this special different thing that we keep referring to it. It's gonna be so integrated. I mean, they're already talking about the AI of things as opposed to the internet of things. So AI is already being integrated into virtually all products. So the future is gonna be very different for us for sure. Okay, any other closing remarks, uh, Dr. Kolopian? Uh, it's a pleasure, Brent. And I would say yes, indeed, for the instructors engaged with the technology, for students, be transparent. And uh, AI literacy is indeed an increasingly important topic. Thank you very much, Brent. All right, thank you very much. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. And remember, learning is for life.